He didn't start his musical journey until he was 16. Yet, at his fourth year of college, he won the title of the BBC Cardiff Singer of the World competition. To him, he said, singing is not just a profession. It's his interest. It's his passion. Let's meet singer, bass baritone, Shen Yang. If he can make it in New York, as the saying goes, he can make it anywhere. And if he can wow the Welsh nation of singers with his bass baritone voice, he can conquer the world. All that by the age of 31. Shen Yang is a regular at New York's Metropolitan Opera House and winner of the BBC Cardiff Singer of the World competition. We have to start from the very beginning. Sure. How important actually is this competition? the Singer of the World competition to singers, to students, to young musicians like yourself? Well, I was selected to, uh, to join the competition because only one singer can represent their country. So there's so no one more. singer, one representative from one country? Yes. And um, how many people would apply for this competition worldwide? I think in that there it was about uh, 650 around that. Uh, Six hundred six hundred and fifty singers around and they, the world. Not all of them got the chance to go actually there. No, to only twenty five. Only twenty five. So yeah. six hundred and fifty from the world over will be shortlisted yep. to only twenty five people. Yep. I would call that that's like the first round. Okay. And I think more than the six hundred singers are gone. So only twenty five singers were uh, able to to be compete in college. actually. Yep. There are the real contestants. Yep. And you were one of the youngest or the youngest? The youngest, for sure. The youngest? Yep. 23 year old at the time? Yep. It can be really hard because this competition is not like uh, Operalia, we, we call it the Domingo competition. That's like the opera competition. You only can sing about three or four arias, that's all. Mm. But this competition, you have a song prize, you have a main prize. At least you need about 50 minutes music. F 15 or 50? 50. 50 because it's a BBC Cardiff thing of the world yeah. and um, they have uh, cameras everywhere. It's a reality show. It's oh, yeah. a live program. And I, I, I said, I, I joked them, I said, look at you guys, I mean, you have a camera on me all the time except in the bathroom. In, uh, in bathroom. Taking showers. And they said, okay. next time we'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> That will be a different program, yeah. I guess. Yeah. And uh, my English wasn't that, I mean, wasn't that good. wasn't okay. ready for that, like a live interview in, in English. So the first time I did the, uh, the interview in English, I was in Cardiff. Think about that. Right after you're singing, in backstage, mm. they will ask you some questions. Yeah, I mean, your 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 impression would be would be real, would be live at the time. Yeah, it, it, just think about that. That's yeah. so hard. It's, uh, it's, uh, but I didn't have any uh, translator, so I just did. I just did that. I mean, the, the competition, 25 out of 650 entered the final round, and then there were two rounds right, of singing, right? Uh, 25 yeah. down to five yeah. final finalists. Yep. And there is only one winner, and one winner only. <laughs> yeah. There, there isn't a second category, second prize, third prize. There's no second prize. If you're going to win the competition, you win the top prize. Yep. You're number one. Otherwise, you're only like, you can be the finalist. That's it. Still, so no second can, prize, yeah. no third prize. That's that's tough. <laughs> And the aria I've, I've sung, which is the um, the Alekos Kavatina from uh, Opera Aleko, composed by uh, Rachmaninoff, mm. it's the uh, 
the area I got to know a long time ago because my dad sang this area in his um, um, graduation recital. Um, Your father is also a, a, a singer. A he's a baritone. And yeah. yeah, he sang this. And um, I got to know this area a long time and I didn't know what exactly this is about. And um, I did this area. And um, I would say it was, it was one of the, uh, the best moments I've ever had because um, I got some of the reviews from the newspaper in, the, um, in England, in the Wales. They said, um, Shenyang sang this aria and make, made um, half of the audience drop the tears. And the BBC Cardiff Singer of the World 2007 is Inishlith BBC Kanurabid Cardi Dui Vila Saith Adi Shenyang. I watched the video when your name was announced. The final winner is Shenyang. And you were a bit lost. You can see some of the other um, videos from, uh, from uh, different years of the yes. Cardiff Singer World. Um, <laughs> some of them, they're like just like a winning lottery, something like, oh, I wouldn't do that. If I, if I have another chance to win something, I wouldn't do that. That night, I and mean, when, you, when you won the competition, did you call back to your parents? When I won it, we had a celebration, sort of, a, uh -huh. a reception. Yeah. When I got back to my room, I called them. You Today. know what I said? You know what I said yeah. to my mom? I said, okay, this is it. That's what you said? Yep. What do you mean, this is it? You've won it or? It's like a friend, voila, that's it. It's, it's something. It's just like, uh, I don't want to say I'm cool. It's not cool. You just want to say, um. You sounded cool. I. Just I got, got it. I got it. No big deal. Just got it. And you know what she said? Yeah? She didn't, like, she didn't scream, ah, you made it. No, she didn't say that. She said, <laughs> she said, poor you. It must be hard. That's ah. it. Well, it's like a cool son talking to a cool mother. <laughs> Everything because unspoken. There's so many great moments. Mm. My parents, they didn't, they were not there. There's some other people, but they would support me by heart. They don't have really have to be there because they, um, I think they can feel what I feel. I think photography is something like, it's like um, extension of the music. The old mono recording doesn't have that, uh, you know, like a rich color. It doesn't have a color. It gives you a real, a rich texture. So it has a soul on it. They're professional musicians and didn't push their own child to study music. For instance, you love play uh, soccer. Mm -hmm. You love play uh, TV games. We don't call you. I'm, I work so hard on it. It's not work anymore. It's not work anymore. It's playtime. So if you like it, it's like a play. You enjoy it, and you make it so easy. Hello, I'm Shen Yang. You're watching Icon on CCTV News. More than other musical disciplines, opera singers must develop a broad range of skills, including acting, accomplishment in foreign languages, and a facility with complex libretti. Surprising then that Shen Yang devotes very little time to study himself. <laughs> They're professional musicians and didn't push their own child to study music. I'm quite lucky because I, I became um, to a uh, music lover at the same time when I decided to learn music. I, I would say singing. Mm. So people said, oh, Shen Yang, you, you, you work so hard, you study so hard. 
um, yeah, we should learn something from you because you know you just really work on it very hard. I said, no, I'm not. I'm lazy. I don't really spend that much time. He said, how 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 did you learn this? How did you make it? I said, you know, once you love something. Mm. For instance, you love play uh, soccer. Mm -hmm. You love play uh, TV games. We don't call you. I'm. I work so hard on it. It's not work anymore. It's not work anymore. It's playtime. So if you like it, it's like a play. You enjoy it, and you make it so easy. Mm. So this is something I I felt like. It's a it's a tip. I would call people to find a way to find what they really love. That's why I always told the um, younger generations, I mean young singers, do you really love this? Mm. This is only one of four major competitions you went to, which obviously the uh, the biggest. The But biggest. Other three is like uh, I call the small competitions. Not But still, really. you won the top prize. Yeah, but I just okay. It's, <laughs> after after winning Cardiff, yeah, that's all right. <laughs> But after that, you didn't actually go to another competition. Uh, that, that was the end. Yeah, because I think I don't know how you, how do you feel this. But you know, to me, the competition I call the music competitions. It's not like you know the uh, the competition of the like the pop music. It's mm. not like that. I would call this. This is like a key to help you to open a gate. So once you open it, which means you are in this business, then just do it.、Mm. Just be professional and work on it.、Mm. So you don't need, you don't need any more. It's not just about you know you you you're gonna earn more money, you'll be more famous. It's not about that. So it's not like it's for promotion. It's really you, you, once you it's like a gateway leading、yep. you、it's、to this club. Once you are in the club, you're in the club. You don't need more any more competitions. I would say I made the right decision. I don't. I really don't need to do any more voice competition, because I still remember my manager told me,、um, "I'm not worried. You can't sing it well, or you can't sing it." He wanna ask me to take time to develop myself and find my own artistry, not just make success. This is quite important. It's more like a career plan. Yep. It's、mm. not just about. Okay, you can take whatever you can get. Born in Tianjin to a soprano mother and a baritone father, as a boy, Shen Yang entered youth music contests for fun. But by 16, music had become an obsession, which later turned into a profession. After winning the prestigious Cardiff Trophy, Shen Yang went on to New York, studying at the world-renowned Juilliard Opera Center, and joining the Young Artist Development Program at the Met. Everything I've learned from Cardiff and the time the study in 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 New York, they all taught me how to be yourself,、mm. and、um, don't. Be、uh, bothered by other、uh, distraction, because in our time there's so many informations, there's so many people try to、um, bring you away of your、uh, road. This、mm. is not that easy. Before the competition, well, even while you were attending the competition, you were just a student of the fourth year at the Shanghai Conservatory of Music.、Uh, what did you actually do to prepare for that? I mean. When you went to Cardiff, it was just not not just you. You were there with a few other people, I guess, who also played a very important role、mm -hmm. in you becoming who you are today. Rene、um, went to Shanghai and、uh, gave a recital there in、uh, in April、mm. of two thousand seven. And before the, before the recital,、um, she also gave a master class in in my school. So I was one of the students there.、Mm. Um, <laughs> Something funny. I sang、um, a Verdi aria, which is very dramatic. She said, "Oh, you're so young. You don't have to sing this." I think probably your teachers just want to challenge you. I said, "No, it's it's not about that. I'm gonna do the、um, the Cardiff Singer of the World competition." Oh, she she was quite surprised and she said, "Oh, come on, 
this is such a great free thing. I mean, it's happening. You know, she's a lovely lady. She said, do you need any help? <laughs> I, I definitely know, you know, what, what that means. Uh -huh. I didn't really respond. It's very Chinese way, you know? Yeah. Because we got hundreds of audience. If I say that on stage, I say, oh yeah, of course. Uh, can I get your email? Can I get your phone number? Mm. I cannot say that mm. because we got so many uh, audience. So after that, there's a friend of mine said, do you understand what she, she said? What? She said, um, do you need any help? You should go and ask her. I said, I can't. We have so many audience here. I can't say that. It, um, it makes me bad. You know, mm -hmm. just they, they, they embarrassing. Don't. Embarrassing. And um, later, a couple of days later, I think um, Shirley Young called me because the idea of the MasterCard actually is from Shirley. Yeah. Shirley told Renee, you should have something else besides of the uh, recital. And that makes you uh, connect better with the, um, with the music schools, you know, the young singers. And Shirley said, um, me and Renee, we decide to help you a little bit. So why don't you go to New York and have a, a week coaching with, with the good teachers, coaches there, and then go to Cardiff. And I made it. I think our artists are great, um, are great ambassadors for mm. us, okay? The dancer, and then Liao Sang the singer, and singer. Shen Yang. And we have so many, many artists of all different kinds who, mm. are, who have been ambassadors for the Chinese culture. I mean, just the fact they look Chinese. Oh, you know, gee, that's the Chinese doing that. How wonderful. I think photography is something like, it's like um, extension of the music. The old mono recording doesn't have that, uh, you know, like a rich color. It doesn't have a color. It gives you a real, a rich texture. So it has a soul on it. Probably new direction for your new career in the future, conducting. It's not just about, you know, do the gestures, I know the music. <laughs> you have the figure, you do look yes. like the boss. It's <laughs> not about the size of the body. Uh. It's about the, uh, the ego. Speak softly, love, and hold me warm against your heart. For Shen Yang, other art forms flow from the same creative source, including his photography. Unusually for this day and age, Shen Yang is a keen collector of old records, a habit he began when he was 16. An important part of his collection is devoted to Chinese musicians from the early 20th century. This was the first generation of Chinese musicians to be influenced by Western music, including composer Huang Zi and opera singer Yi Kui Xie. And he's just as passionate about these hobbies as he is about his singing profession. So it has to be out of your interest, your true love to what you are doing. And yeah. that's what's happening on you with your interest, your love for music. Absolutely, yeah. And you have other interests? Something else, yeah. Photography? Yep. Uh, collecting old albums? Yes. And starting your new, I wouldn't say for now, maybe <laughs> new career conducting. Um, but these are all your new interests. Or maybe not new interests, but other interests. Let's I, start with photography. I think photography is something like, it's like um, extension of the music. To me, it's just, just like extension because music I would call, even opera, there's something like you have a visual um, connection with the, the stage, mm. something like that. But it's not, it's not as good as the photography. This is something like, um, I would call the visualized music. So that why you have that? special interest in black and white pictures? 
sort of. I, I, I like the color uh, photos too, but you know, black and white, just like um, you, t you said, I, I collect old albums, records, yeah, albums, records, yeah. records. It's like black and white photo photography, it's same as the mono recording. Mm -hmm. The old mono recording doesn't have that, uh, you know, like a rich color. It doesn't have a color. I, I use that word to describe mm -hmm. music. Because it's a mono, it's old 78 RPMs records. It has some of surface noises. But it gives you a real, a rich texture of the, the sound. And nobody has edited, nobody cut it, and you know, there's no way, because mm -hmm. that was a long time ago. So it's exactly what they can bring you. Mm -hmm. So it has a soul on it. Well, now you see photography is like an extension to your music. But if you come back to the collection of old records, say, from 100 years ago even, that's closely connected to what you do now as a musician, right? Yeah. As the musical, the music records from old China? I collect everything, especially I like the uh, um, first, I like um, old generation singers. Um, probably it's the singers I call the, the Western singer who was who were born probably in um, in the mid of 19th century, and they made recording in the beginning of the 20th century, and um, it was like uh, the most important documents we we can get because from what we can learn from s teachers now, probably it's after generation after and many generations, but that time we just can learn from the singer directly, even the, the recording. It's not that perfect, but you know, still can get that connection. Mm -hmm. um, but to to our music, the Chinese music, it's like from uh, I would say from 20s to 40s. That was the first um, generation of all the kind of Chinese musicians who um, studied in the West, who immigrate, uh, introduced music to China. Um, to educate the, f the second generation of Chinese musicians, that was the most important time. So it's China. like the music foundation of China pretty much was founded in those years. Yeah. The 20s, yeah, 30s. Even with the Western world at his feet, Jin Yang is devoted to promoting Chinese musicians and disseminating their musical gifts. One of his latest recitals commemorates the 100th anniversary of Yi Kui Se, the first Chinese to establish a career in Western opera, a true pioneer, and just like Xinyang, a bass baritone. I always try to search a man who names Yi Kui Se. Si Yi Gui, um, who could be the greatest Chinese singer ever, because between 40s to uh, 70s, he was the only Chinese singer who got international career. Just think about in the 40s and 50s, none of the Chinese were in this business, so he was the only one. But to me, uh, there, there's so many things to have to do in the future. It's not just about perform Chinese music in the West. I think it's about how do you find your own way, the correct way to introduce the music. Why you would have the interest to do it, because you're still so young, and you are so now so much known to the world arena. We should know what the tradition is, how it developed, step by step. Mm. So people should know composer, I mean all the composers generation after generation. It's it's like um, a history. A legacy. A legacy. But from what I've heard people are not quite sure. They mm. only got to know few names. But names don't mean anything. Mm. You should know exactly what, what who they are and what they have done for us. 
So that's the energy to help us to keep going on and really make another legacy. It's in, about inheriting the legacy, but at the same time knowing where we come from before we know where we're going next. Yes. Yeah. Let's move on to your next interest, not <laughs> intro, probably new direction for your new career in the future, conducting. I think normally people thought, oh, conductor is like a maestro, okay, like a boss on a stage, and he uh, he leads people, he uh, he earns the most of money. He's you know he's a big star. It's not. Once you decided to be conductor, which means for the most of the time, the score is the only friend of, 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 of you because you really need to be prepared. You need to know better than anyone else mm. on the stage how to find your own character. You have to have that the huge energy to support you, huge confidence. I know there's some of young conductors mm. who love music, are good, they're good musicians, you, you never feel they like conductors because they, um, they don't look like conductors. You know what I mean? <laughs> you have the figure. You do look uh, like the boss. It's <laughs> not about the size of the body. Uh, it's about the, uh, the ego. Mm. So it's, it's um, I wouldn't say myself um, as a conductor or, you know, probably I, would, I wouldn't do that professionally. It's so hard. It's, it's a tough job. So you're a singer, but you don't want to see yourself just as a singer. You, if you have other interests, you want to follow the, those interests. So the bottom line is, you follow your heart. But actually, I do have other interests. And they brought me something else, make my singing completely different. Mm. That's why I'm unique. Because I know singers, they worry about their careers. Oh, I should get more contract. I should get that performance. Mm -hmm. I should have a more engagements. I'm not that worried. So it's, singing, it, it is a profession, but not just profession to you. It's more like an interest. Yeah. And just like combination. Mm. Once you can bring them together, you will see the chemistry. Mm. So I, I do, I have seen them already. The ideas I followed. Mm. And it's quite, it works, it really works. And I see people really appreciate them, my ideas. Mm. So it's been going on really well, actually. The recitals I'm, I'm going to do in the future, it's all about that. It's not just about I should sing well. It's about how to make the concepts come true and mm. bring them together and make them work. Mm. So I can clearly see the marks that we see on anyone who's born in the 80s. <laughs> so a new generation Chinese singer. Thank you once again for your time. Thank you for telling us your story. Yeah, 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 yeah.